Hi guys, welcome to another oil filter cut-up video. Today I've got the pure laters that I've been promising. As always, these filters fit the same vehicle as all the other filters I've reviewed on this channel, so if you check out any of my other content, just know that this is an apples-to-apples -apples kind of comparison. Now, I'd like to start off by giving a little bit of history on Pure Later as a company, and I'll explain why in a minute. So it was founded in 1923 under a different name by two gentlemen who were the first to patent an automotive oil filtration system. And they chose the name Pure Later because it's short for the words Pure Oil Later. Now if you fast forward to 2006, Pure Later is bought by a joint venture between Bosch and Mann and & Hummel. And that lasted for about six years until uh, Bosch's stake was bought out by Mann & Hummel. And that's pretty much the way things are today. So the reason I point this out is that when I got looking at these filters in preparation for this video, I noticed an awful lot of similarities between them and some of the Bosch filters I reviewed in one of my previous videos. So I thought there might be some type of uh, connection between these two companies, and it turns out that Bosch owned Purelator, at least in part, for a number of years um, between 2006 and 2012. So that explained some of the similarities, which I'll get into in a little bit here. So I've got four tiers here, the standard Purelator here on the left, the Purelator Tech next to it, which is really meant for service shops and garages and things that will be doing oil changes for you. Um, the Pure Later 1 is next uh, is the next highest tier. Uh, these guys might be similar. I'm not exactly sure if one is considered better than the other, but we'll look at that in a little bit. And at the top end, we have the Pure Later Boss, okay? So I'm going to start off by talking about these first three because of how similar they are. As you can probably already tell, they're all the same size. The cases are the same diameter and height, and underside, they, ha they share the same tapping plate design. The only differences between these three, aside from... The markings and the color are what the gasket and anti-drainback valve materials are made from underneath, okay? The uh, standard purulator and the tech here both make them out of nitrile rubber, whereas the one has them uh, coming in uh, silicone, which is better for more extreme temperature performance, so that's kind of cool. Other than that, they share uh, all of the following features. They've got the 8-hole inlet pattern. Here for a combined inlet area of about 0.318 square inches. They all have the same 20 millimeter tapped hole on the center that has four threads on it. They all have the same size rectangular cross section gasket, okay? And this thickness here is 120 thousandths. As far as weight goes, they're very similar, okay? The standard pure later comes in at 257 grams. The tech weighs... 256, as does the Pure Later 1. Okay, so they're all extremely similar in that regard. Now, I do want to point out how similar this Bosch Premium is to some of these guys here. So take, take a look. The cases are the same size, and check out the tapping plates underneath. Pretty cool how similar those are. So, moving on to the Boss. This is the one that I'm most excited about. It's a little bit smaller in diameter and a little bit taller. But the first real cool difference is that it weighs an awful lot more. It comes in at over 350 grams, which is nearly 40% heavier than these guys. And there are two main reasons for why that is, okay? The first is that the case is extra thick at 20 thousandths of an inch versus 15 on these other guys. And I'll verify that when I cut these up, but I've seen that before where the lower tier filters have a 15 thousandths inch case and then the heavier ones are thicker. And that's to give higher burst pressure before failure but also, it just makes it tougher if you drop it or it gets hit with a rock or something. It's just less prone to take damage, so that's that's pretty cool. But the other factor that contributes to why this thing is so heavy is the thickness of this tapping plate underneath. Now, you can look through the inlet holes there and kind of see how thick it is, but to give you some context, here's how thick it is compared to the others. That's awfully thick. That's pretty cool. Furthermore, this tapped hole has five threads on it versus the four on the on these originals here. The other kind of cool thing that you get that's extra robust is this gasket, okay? This gasket is 182 thousandths thick versus the 120 on the others. And that's probably just to support the higher burst pressure performance because it's less likely to have a blowout under high pressure, so that's pretty cool. But it's also made from an, an interesting material that I've never come across before. Usually... Well, pretty much always, all of the top-end um, filters have silicone anti-drainback valves, which this one does. 
and silicone gaskets. This one, though, is made from an ethylene acrylic, which is an elastomer, and I had to look this up, but it was, it's an elastomer that's engineered for superior heat and chemical resistance. So that is pretty cool. That is a first I've ever seen like that. Anyway, that's pretty much everything I've got on the exterior of all these guys. Now, I do want to point out that Bosch has their own equivalent of this guy, okay? This is the Bosch Distance Plus that I've looked at before. And as you can see, it's got the same case sizes. And the tapping plates underneath are of the same design also. Now, if my memory serves me, their gasket is made from silicone, not this extra fancy ethylene stuff. But that's pretty much the only difference that I'm aware of on the exterior. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and cut all these guys open so we can have a look at the cartridges inside as well as the material that the uh, filters themselves are made out of, be it like a wood pulp or a full synthetic. We'll, we'll have to see about that. And also I want to get a look at the emergency bypass valves that you can sort of see through the center hole there already, uh, what they're made out of, and uh, we'll go from there. So here's what we got. It turns out that the Classic, Tech, and One filters all have the same internals except for the filter paper. If you're not familiar, the filter is just a single piece of material that's folded back and forth on itself inside of the can here to just to maximize surface area. Okay. Now if you cut it open and you stretch it all out, you just get a single rectangular piece of material like this. Now this one is from the Classic, and if I stretch it all the way out and I put a tape measure to it, I get 42 and a half inches. Now if I do that for the tech and the one though, I get 44 and a quarter inches and 55 and a quarter inches. So as you work up the different tiers, you get more filter area basically. So note that the classic and the tech both use the same multi-fiber high density media, whereas the one uses an upgraded high density synthetic blend media. And that kind of explains where you get your efficiency numbers from. Purelator does publish efficiency numbers. For the Classic and the Tech, you get 96.5%, and for the one, you get 99 But I had to email Purelator to find out or confirm that they got these efficiency numbers through ISO standardized testing, which I wish they would just be upfront about on their website, but they weren't. Oh, well. But even then, I'm not exactly sure what size particles they were testing for when they got these efficiency numbers. My guess is somewhere between, you know, 20 and 40 microns, which is typical for oil filters, but I just can't say. Anyway, again, I wish manufacturers would be more upfront about publishing more complete data. But the center tubes on these guys all use the same helical style seam here. You can see that it's uh, running up along the outside edge here, that's generally considered stronger and more desirable than the um, single axial seam design that you'll see in other filters. This one's from a Fram Ultra that I've cut up before, but so that's that's a plus for all these guys using the same thing. And lastly, here are the emergency bypass valves you get with all of these, okay? It's nothing too special. I've seen this style a bunch of times before. It's basically a coil spring and a little disc-shaped seal that are captured by a piece of sheet metal that is tack welded to the top of the filter case. Now one thing I do want to say is that the little seal in there is very hard. It feels like it's made or looks like it's made from some type of compressed fiberboard or something. And it doesn't give a whole lot. I much prefer when manufacturers use something soft and rubbery, Like, and K&N does a great job with this. And here are the Boss and Distance Plus filters, where things are more interesting. As I pointed out before, the base plates on these guys are heavy duty compared to, here's the Classic on the left. And that's even more apparent when you look at them from the inside. That's pretty cool. Furthermore, I went ahead and measured the wall thickness of the cases on uh, the Boss and the three that we had just looked at and confirmed that yes, the Boss's wall is 20 thousandths of an inch thick versus fifteen thousandths or maybe a little bit less on the previous three. Now the filter media though is where things get really different. Okay, the Bosch Distance Plus uses the same kind of yellow folded papery kind of material that we just looked at. I'm not exactly sure what the Distance Plus is made from, but I would wager that it's comparable to the synthetic blend that the Pure Leader One is made out of. They say they're Filtration efficiency is 99.9% .9 for, I forget, 40 microns or something like that. 
So I'm sure it's a very good filter, but this white one here is what you get in the Pure Later bus. Now it's cool because it's 100% fully synthetic media. But not only that, if you flip it over to the inside, you see that there is a polymer support screen that is bonded to it for extra stiffness. That is the first time I've ever seen a polymer support screen. It's not uncommon for a filter to have a support screen, but it's every time I've seen it before, it's been like this. This is the filter and screen from a Fram Ultra filter, but you can see that the screen is made of metal and it's not really bonded to the media. Now, whether a polymer support structure is more efficient or more rigid or even more cost effective, I, I'm not really sure, but I do applaud Purolator for trying something new and non-conventional and giving, a sh giving it a shot by bringing it to market. I'm actually pretty impressed by that. Now, my personal favorite among all the filters I've cut up so far, and this is, I think, makes 17 filters now, my favorite up until this point has been the Distance Plus, primarily because of how well built it is. But, since the boss is pretty much a Distance Plus, but with fully synthetic media plus a support behind it, I think that's going to be my new go to personally so i'm i'm actually really impressed by what pure leader brings at uh their their top end so that pretty much wraps up everything i had on the pure leader filters if there are any filters that you want me to look at from other brands let me know in the comments and if you have any questions please leave them there as well and if you like the content please subscribe it helps me out quite a bit and as always thank you for watching